Thank you. Uh, so I'll be very brief. <laughs> um, uh, we focused a bit on the timeline on how we get or got to the to the situation today. So Portugal is performing uh, testing with lay workers at the community since 2000, to, um, 2011. And the way uh, the process uh, went was um, it started in 2007, seven, actually, uh, through a, a program called CLOTO program. So it was a program uh, promoted by the National HIV program, so the Minister of Health. And this is uh, the first time that we had rapid tests in Portugal. This program was um, aiming to the early identification of HIV infection through the use of rapid tests. And it was performed in mostly in two places, in uh, centers that we called CAD. So they are uh, centers from the Ministry of Health that uh, uh, works on counseling and uh, uh, testing for HIV, and also in the treatment centers of the uh, EU, um, the, the, the drug agency in Portugal, so targeting more people use drugs. So at the time, uh, there was a pilot. I, would, I actually participated in this pilot at the time. Uh, and it was the testing was performed only by medical doctors, nurses, and psychologists. And it was the algorithm of uh, pre-counseling, testing, and counseling. And not, not always implemented the same way in all centers, but mostly it was like this. So the, the psychologist would do, would do the pre-counseling, then the nurse would do the finger trip, and then the, the, the psychologist would give the results and the post-counseling uh, to the client. This would take like one hour or so, okay? Um, at this time, a uh, community was already invited uh, and it was involved in the development of the guidelines for CLOTO programs. So meaning for the, we provided the input to the, to the guidelines, to the questionnaire of the, the, the counseling. So it was already some involvement from the community at this point. In 2009, um, there was um, a decision of the national program uh, through its coordinator to conduct a study called the PREVI study uh, that was aiming to, to check the HIV prevalence uh, and the testing and healthcare access among mostly MSM and sex workers. Okay, uh, this was um, a, the study was conducted by the program and by um, universities, so the uh, medical um, tropical medical institute of Portugal, uh, and the uh, guide was invited also to um, to support this study through the questionnaires. So at the time it was not possible that the community could perform the testing. So it would be the health professionals doing the test itself, but the community was part of the study um, by reaching out to the key population and performing the, the questionnaires, okay? And why it was not possible? Although I have to say that um, we are very lucky in Portugal because at the time the director of the national program was, was someone that was very community friendly, still is. And so um, it was a great help on advocacy work to, to get us to, to community having um, being allowed to, uh, to perform the testing. We could not perform the test because there was a EU directive uh, on medical devices at, at this more, almost at the same time as the study was uh, starting and rapid tests were included and Portugal adopted this directive from the EU. So it was not possible because the, the, the rapid tests, the kits were considered medical devices. So they would have to be handled by health professionals. Okay, so only health professionals could perform the testing. What happened is that uh, the advocacy work from the community and with the support of the, the national program, actually, we managed to have a, an amendment to the national directive saying that uh, there could be exceptions. And uh, uh, in terms of the advocacy, what was mostly used was the example of other self-tests, for example, for pregnancy, for glycemia and so on. Uh, in, in it was approved. So this amendment was uh, released. And this allowed rapid screening uh, being done by, by lay workers, meaning non-professionals, provided that they were trained and there was supervision. Okay. Uh, so from 2010, we could actually start performing testing uh, at the community. In 2011, the previous study uh, was ongoing still. So we uh, moved, uh, shift from 
only performing the questionnaires and reaching out to the to the key population to actually being able to perform the testing. And this is uh, when that checkpoint uh, was inaugurated. It was uh, actually in the scope of the previous study. There was a lot of funding for this study, which helped a lot at the time. And this was the first center in Portugal that could uh, that started uh, performing rapid testing at the time only for HIV. In 2013, there was a decision uh, uh, of the, the 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 program, the national sorry, okay, of the national uh, program to open uh, because based on the good experience of previous study and uh, the pilot that was run by Checkpoint at the time, uh, it was decided that this should be expanded uh, to other organizations and to scale up the testing at national level. So there was a decision to, um, to open a, a funding mechanism so that CBOs could apply for funding for rapid counseling uh, uh, prevention and including rapid testing for HIV. So in 2013, all other organizations started to perform the testing. From 2013 to 2015, we had more organizations uh, uh, doing this work. So in 2015, GAT, together with the ISHPUC, which is the uh, public national institute uh, uh, from Porto University, applied for a new grant. Uh, and we developed what we what is still today, the community screening network. And this allowed something very important as well to integrate other uh, tests uh, apart from HIV. So with the community screening network, we started to, to, to test for HIV, HIV, HBV, and syphilis, and doing it in an integrated way as we are um, looking with the core project. Some of our colleagues are here, so they know what we are talking about. Um, and this is, it was really important to scale up the testing. Today, what just one, other comment because it, it, it may look very easy, but this is, was a lot of work throughout this year's advocacy work. Um, there were still some barriers regarding, although we could perform the testing in the beginning, we, when we tried to refer people to the hospitals, some hospitals were refusing the referral because it was coming from a rapid test uh, performed by the community. So it was also um, needed to do a very strong advocacy work with the hospitals and with the doctors um, so they could accept the referral coming from a, a CBO and um, uh, with a rapid uh, test. Of course, they have to confirm at the hospital, but it was even difficult to, to schedule the appointment for the first uh, consultation at the hospital based on the rapid test. So this was not that easy as it's, it, it looks here. So this is for you to see um, how we are today. So this is the community screening network. Um, as you can see, there's still a lack of, uh, um, of testing centers in some regions of the country. So they are more located in the coast uh, region. So we are still trying to scale up a bit uh, the, the network. So this is the network of community-based organizations. They target all key population. So MSM, transgender, drug users, sex workers, homeless and migrants, especially vulnerable and documented migrants offers tailored prevention and detection of HIV, viral hepatitis, syphilis to discrete groups, and very important support the, the access, um, to access diagnosis treatment or uh, prophylaxis in the NHS. Um, and a third very important um, activity of the order of the network that is led by the ISHPUP is uh, uh, the structure data, the, the, the collection of data during the, the, the rapid test session. So this enables, enables to, to, to have community-driven epidemiological data for these four infections, because all these organizations, they perform the test with the same procedures. There is a manual, uh, there is a training that is provided by GAT to all these organizations, and they use all the same questionnaire, which uh, allows this group then to monitor uh, and to have a cohort uh, for these infections uh, at national level. For you to have an idea, this was the, the progress. So since 2015 until uh, 2022, we don't have the net of obviously the annual data from 23. So we started with a few tests in uh, 2015, but uh, with the scale up of, of uh, the activity of the centers, uh, you can see in 2022 that it is uh, quite 
great increase of deaths for the four infections, actually. And uh, I think it's this. <laughs>